Are you ready to harness the power of Automatic 1111? The leading graphical user interface for advanced users in the world of stable diffusion. This guide is your ultimate resource for mastering the ins and outs of 1111. Whether you're an absolute beginner looking for a step-by-step -step tutorial or an experienced user seeking a reference manual so you can reference it. Why Automatic 1111? Thanks to its dedicated community of passionate users. However, we understand that navigating its extensive feature set can be a daunting task, especially for newcomers as comprehensive documentation is lacking. But worry not, as this guide is here to demystify the process for you. Since you've already seen the previous video on installing stable diffusion on your local machine, this video will focus on discussing the user interface and the fundamentals. When you open the stable diffusion for the first time, you'll see a section called checkpoints. Here you can choose from different pre-trained AI models. Initially, when you're just starting out, you'll have one option, the 1.5 base model. It's a good place to begin our journey and get comfortable with the interface. Next, you will see text to image tab. This tab performs the core function, which is converting a text prompt into images. Within this tab, you'll find the prompt box. In the prompt text box, write down exactly what you want to see in the pictures the AI will make. Be really clear and detailed with your description. It's essential to be detailed and specific using effective keywords. You can refer to prompt generator for guidance or watch the next video for prompts and keywords in this playlist. Below that, there's the negative prompt section. Input what you wish to avoid in the generated images. Utilize negative prompts when working with V2 models, and you can also employ a universal negative prompt for this purpose. Moving on to the generation tab, this is where most of the magic happens. Sampling method. To make an image in stable diffusion, it starts with a random picture and then removes the noise. This happens about 12 times, and at the end, you get a clean image. This process is called sampling because it makes a new sample image each time. At the time of recording, there are 19 samplers available in Automatic 1111. The number seems to be growing over time. I use DPM++2 M Caras because it balances speed and quality well. Next is sample steps. As you increase the number of sampling steps, you'll notice an enhancement in image quality. Usually, taking around 20 steps with the DPM Keras is sufficient to achieve a high-quality, sharp image. For now, we won't be delving into these two options because they are more advanced. We'll explore them in future videos as we progress. Width and Height You adjust the slider and create the desired image. As for the image generation on low-end graphic card or on a local machine, it is advisable to use 512 pixels by 512 pills space. Next to width and height, we have batch count and batch size. Batch count is number of times you run the image generation pipeline. And batch size is number of images to generate each time you run the pipeline. CFG scale or classifier free guidance scale is a setting that determines how closely the model follows your input prompt. As you can observe in the image, the range falls between 1 and 30. Let's assess how well it's functioning. One is mostly ignore your prompt. Three, be more creative. Seven, a good balance between following the prompt and freedom. Fifteen, adhere more to the prompt. Thirty, strictly follow the prompt. Suggestion is you should begin with a setting of seven and raise it if you want the model to pay closer attention to your input. S-E-E-D. The seed value is like the starting point for making a picture. It decides what's in the image. Each picture has its own seed value. If you set it to one, Automatic 1111 will pick a random one. We have some other options also, which we will cover in more upcoming videos. Now, let's check out the top right corner. You'll find the generate button, which is like the magic button to make your artwork. Right below that, there's a blue arrow pointing down. This arrow acts like an undo button or takes you back to your previous prompt. Next to the blue arrow, there's a reset button. Moving a bit lower, you'll see the style option. Here, you can create your very own style prompts and save them for future use. 
Now, let's take a look at the artwork window where your image comes to life. Right below it, you'll notice six options. The first one is Open Image Output Directly, which allows you to quickly find the folder where your creations are saved. Moving on, we have the second and third options, Save to Log Directly. This is a particularly important feature as it stores your image settings and prompts in a separate Excel file, along with its seed value. Next up is the fourth option, Send from Image to Image. Here, you can create and edit your image, perform some in-painting, and experiment with different variations. The fifth option is Send this directly to in-painting, but we'll cover that in a later video. Lastly, there's the sixth option, Send Images to Extras. This is where you can upscale your images. And that pretty much wraps up our tour of the text to image tab. Now, let's move on to the image to image tab. This is where the magic happens. You can create different versions of images and even do some in painting. Think of it as Stable Diffusion's version of Photoshop, where you can visually manipulate images to your heart's content. Within the image to image tab, you'll notice familiar text boxes for prompts and negative prompts. However, it's important to note that they function differently within the image-to-image -image context. Next to these text boxes, you'll find two options. The first one is Interrogate Clip, which is primarily used to generate prompts based on the content of your uploaded image within the image-to-image -image section. The second option is Interrogate Deep Guru, which is particularly useful for working with character and anime images. Let's explore both of these options in action. Simply drag and drop your image into the Generate Image to Image section. Then, click on Interrogate Clip. After a brief analysis, your prompt will appear in the Prompt text box. Now, if you want to experiment with an image of an anime character, use Interrogate Deep Buru in the same way. Once the system completes its analysis, your prompt will be displayed in the Prompt text box. I hope this process is clear for you. In the Generation tab, there's a section called Image to Image. Right now, we'll focus on this section, but we'll cover other features like Sketch, InPaint, InPaint, Sketch, and InPaint Upload in more advanced videos. Below, you'll see a box where you can drop your image. Additionally, you have the option to copy this image to different tabs, like Sketch, InPaint, InPaint Sketch, and InPaint Upload. This allows you to send the image directly to various tabs as needed. Moving forward, you'll encounter the Resize option, which provides you with four different choices. For this demonstration, I'll select Resize. Additionally, there's the Refiner option, but we won't be exploring it in this video. The remaining options are quite similar to those found in the Text to Image tab, with one notable difference being the denoising strength. This parameter influences the degree of change in the image. To begin our creative process, we'll leave this set to the default value of 0.7. Now, let's put the Image to Image tab into action. Let's move on to our third tab, which is Extras. Here, you have the ability to enhance the size of your images, whether it's a single image, a group of images, or an entire bundle of images on the server. You can achieve this using options like Single Image, Batch Image, or Batch Directory. To get started, you can upload your image. Below the Generate button, you'll find two options for upscaling, Scale By and Scale To. Let's explore the Scale By option first. You can set the resizing value to 2, 4, or 6, depending on how much you want to increase the size. Below that, you can use the upscaler to refine your image and adjust any necessary settings. Once you're satisfied, simply hit Generate your upscaled image will appear in the right window. You can click here to download your enhanced image. Now, let's explore the PNG Info tab. Imagine you're facing an issue where you can't remember a particular image you created yesterday, or perhaps you have an image in your folder but can't recall the prompt and settings you used. Inside this tab, you can easily access all this information. Simply drop your image and it will provide you with the prompts and general settings that were used to create that specific image. Let's see this in action. Here you have prompt and other settings. We won't be delving into the checkpoint merger and train tabs in this basic introduction since they are considered more advanced features. Moving on, we have the settings and extensions tabs. 
Here, you can tweak your stable diffusion settings and even add third-party extensions to enhance its capabilities. That pretty much sums up our basic introduction to the user interface. As we continue learning together, we'll gradually explore each tab, providing you with a deeper understanding of Stable Diffusion's functionalities. Stay in touch, and if you like this video, please subscribe and comment down your thoughts.